Okay, Alex, me old son. Part two, paints. Now, as you're going to be playing the game, the painting considerations for a gaming miniature, uh, such as, you know, 40k and Robotech guys, are a little different to the uh, tanks and stuff that your, your dad makes. The big difference, and it isn't scale, although obviously scale is a factor. Things that are smaller, you don't always do direct detail work. Sometimes it's more a case of doing simulated detail. On a 135 tank, for instance, it's much bigger. An Abrams, like you built, is drastically bigger than a Space Marine or the Eldar guys or in nearly any of the vehicles that are in 40k. So the detail on a 135 tank is very direct. You're, you're putting it directly as you want it to be. On something that's small, you sometimes have to simulate detail. On a figure with chainmail, for instance, you're not actually painting the chainmail directly a lot of the time. You're, you're trying to do silver and washes to try to give it some definition, but it's not the same as on a larger figure where you actually can paint the chainmail. So there's a couple of considerations when it comes to the detail, but the big consideration that is the difference between straight out modeling and wargaming is durability. Typically you don't touch the models you build, but with wargaming you're moving them. When you play with, with these, you pick them up, you measure the distance, you pick them up again, you move them. If they get destroyed, they get removed from the table. They suffer a lot of handling. So that that's has to be reflected in the way that you paint them. Now, one thing about GW paints is they tend to be rather robust. That is one thing that is quite cool um, with the GW stuff. Also, their style of painting doesn't dilute the paint a great deal, which also adds to its durability. If it's not thinned, there's more paint, and more paint is stronger than less paint. And their formula is also more durable. So they, they basically design their, their paint range around the idea of them being handled. So getting GW paints isn't a bad idea. Uh, I'm very selective with my GW paints. I'm not a huge fan of GW as a paint, but my paint style uh, is different. And it's really a paint style that is dictating my choice of paints rather than anything else. But I mean, I, I did buy um, a couple. I've got these for uh, use with a ghost idea that I'm doing. And the purple I just picked up because I really liked it. So there's nothing wrong if you ever want to pick up GW paints. They are very good. Uh, you might have Humbrol acrylics around. They're quite good as well. Um, not as durable. They're not really designed for miniatures specifically but they brush very well they have a lot of colors and they can be very cool with making your army look quite nice your dad uses I think you said model color excellent paints um, I don't think that you'll be spraying many of these you can spray miniatures there's no reason not to it's just I find a lot of work for you know a, a little amount of gain I mean there are they're very small so, I mean, there's my, I, I, I'm going to like clean my airbrush and do all this work to spray him. I'd rather just brush paint him, but I mean that's, that's preference. But really I think you're going to brush paint more than you're going to airbrush the figures. So there's nothing wrong with model colour, it's an excellent paint range. There's a lot in the range and if you have access to them with your dad, there's no reason not to use them. My personal choice of paints is Reaper. I love the Reaper paints, but it's not so much the paint from a uh, brand point of view, it suits my paint style. As you can see, I have quite a lot of them and a whole bunch under the uh, desk here. I like Reaper paints. Um, they have nice colors. 
it's a fantasy based range so it's not got military colors uh, you got colors you can use in 40k for camo definitely you know, a mix of two greens as an example it's fine on a 40k figure it's not these don't match uh, World War II or modern soldiers but they, they're fine for 40k and what I like about them is I typically dilute my paint uh, a lot these are these come pre thinned a little so they've already got a little bit of thinner in them and when I'm talking dilution it's the amount of either water or thinner that you add to your paint now you never ever ever except for the times you do haha <laughs> should paint straight out of the bottle you should never just open up the bottle and paint from it there are times you will um, those times are rare and they're usually edging work where you don't want the paint to go anywhere other than where you specifically need it to go now you might say but don't you always want paint to specifically go where you want it to go yes but what I mean is when I thin down a paint right so let's say I was going to use this blue which actually I might on someone like this dude if I go to do it I might actually dilute my paint 60 uh, well maybe 6 to 1 so I might do 6 drops of water to 1 drop of paint now that makes a very diluted medium and it will take a lot of time to build up color doing that but um, okay. doing it that way allows I don't know if this is gonna how well this is gonna show but on the brickwork here like here I don't know if it's shown but there's it's darker here and it's darker here and there's like lighter part shades in here and along the edges uh, the green here it's darker in the middle lighter along the edges I don't know if it shows or not that's because of the dilution lots of layers and being able to push the paint around to where I want it to be and you can do that on your figures as well it takes a lot longer and that's what I was saying there's a quicker way less dilution longer way more dilution um, this guy's not finished there's several coats required to bring out the green doing it my way uh, and that green was this one so by using a lot of dilution you just keep building up this guy's far from finished I got a whole bunch of detail work on him but it's just the base colors I was working on but you can see how the the base color looks and that was from lots of little layers thin layers building it up now obviously the problem with diluting something is it's diluted haha <laughs> but with it being thinner it can be less durable because there's a less solid mass on each part it's obviously going to be uh, more important on areas you touch so on this guy I keep wanting to pick these guys up from their thrusters so and if I but I mean obviously on the game board it's better if you can move them from the base but I want to keep touching these thrusters now that's going to be a high traffic area then for touching so I've got to make sure it's strong one of the best ways to do that is varnish and with figures especially if it's going to be 40k and especially if you think you're going to be touching it a lot you might even want to varnish more regularly uh, a lot of the time the only time we varnish is at the end or if we're going to do decals but as we're not necessarily doing decals on figures uh, we don't really varnish you know until the very end but uh, because that might be somewhat problematic on a figure that's going to be handled as much as these are it might be an idea to varnish at different stages so 
Uh, probably doesn't matter if it's gloss or, or matte. Um, depends on the figure if you want it to have a bit of a shine or not. And you can still do it at the end. The last coat, you know, can depend. So on this guy, if I thought he was going to be handled a lot, once I'd done... Um, okay, well I painted both these greens separate and they're not finished, but for sake of the argument and exercise. If I'd have finished all these greens, the dark green, so I'd done all the missiles, I'd done the boosters, I'd done his legs, and I looked at it and I went, I'm really happy with that. You could always varnish it right then and there before doing the light green. The light green will paint over varnish. You just got to make sure it's completely dried. And then you can paint the light green. And then you can do another coat of varnish. You won't do heavy coats, but that light coat will help because you've, you've, you've now put two coats of varnish over the green one for the first one and then as you did this, the light green you're also going to be hitting the dark green for a second time you have to be careful not to be putting too much varnish but by the end you know you might have put four coats of varnish on it and that's a fair amount of protection I still wouldn't you know recommend being unduly rough with them or rubbing them or stuff like that but it's a fair amount of varnish that's on there to give it a you know a protective coat so, your choice on paints, a lot of the time will come down to your painting style. You can dilute these, the ones that your dad have. They actually dilute quite well. If you want to um, do lots of little coats, it takes more patience, and you do need patience. Um, it's not something you can rush through because you want each layer to dry. That's the key. It has to dry completely. Now, I dislike with a passion... Uh, doing a conveyor belt style of painting. Now, by that, I mean technically in Robotech, all these Battle Pod guys in the show were the same colour. So, if I were going to do all of them the same as the show, and I had, like I have here, a couple of built up of the same, you could paint the blue that he's meant to be, and then while that's drying, do the blue that he's meant to be, and then you do your second coat, and then the second coat, and then the third coat, and then the third coat, and then you do your white, and then you do your white, and so on, right? That's entirely possible. It is, however, I find mind-numbingly boring. Nothing has killed my enthusiasm for painting, and I love painting than it is to do a conveyor belt. I did it with um, orcs once because I thought I, I wanted to understand what it was to do an army so I painted a unit of 12 orcs I think it was and I wanted to hang myself from a ceiling fan by the time it was over it was the most boring painting I've ever done I prefer to paint each one individually I also think that doing so will give you a better look and I don't know I mean most of the tournaments that we had and apparently these were more standard sort of rules they had awards for best of the day, so the guy who won the tournament, um, a lot of time they have a sportsmanship award for the guy who everyone liked playing against the most, which funny enough often to be the guy who came dead last, but they also had best painted army, so it might be, it depends on how good you want your army to look, and that's a total personal preference, you know, if you want to spend a lot of time on these, you can, if you want to spend a little bit of time on these, you can, if you want to spend somewhere in the middle, it's up to you. So. If you want your army to look better, then the dilution method is a good way to do it because it, it does with practice and that tend to give very nice results. When you go to do um, highlighting though, you, you won't dilute as much, but you know the, the overall paint style is what you know you're going to be going for if you don't want to um, a lot of the time they do one to one. So they'll do one sort of drop of paint and one drop of water just to give it a little bit of smoothness. And that's it. You know, I do six to one, eight to one, sometimes ten to one. Except for when I'm doing things like if I highlight these little lines on the sensor there, you won't dilute it because the dilution won't stick to them. In those cases, that's when you might take just a little bit of paint straight out and just, this is a crappy brush, but you'd be, you know, just touching the edges with that. And you don't want the paint to go anywhere, so, you know, you won't dilute that. So really, that's that's the choice is going to be on how much you want to dilute it. You know, the, the GW method used to be one-to-one. -one. 
Um, I think it's a little bit now, a bit more than that. In the last time someone told me it was like two to one, they sort of suggested or something like that. But, you know, you can go all the way up to sort of what I do, which is typically six to one. Um, that will take you a lot longer. And I will show you how to do, like, my, my style. I'll actually do a bit where I'm painting one, just so you can see how the paint's reacting, where it sort of goes, and what you should sort of expect if you're going to do that method. Um, but, yeah, that was just a quick discussion on paint so yeah there's nothing wrong with GW if you've got it there's nothing wrong with model color and I'm a huge fan of the um, Reaper series I just I love their paints I just love how they they work um, they're a US based company they do $25 free shipping you know if you hit $25 it's free shipping and it, you know you can get a few, few paints they're about 350 I think a bottle and I found they last a lot longer than G GW stuff because I hate, with a passion, these bloody lids. Hate them. They very springy. I don't always think they close extremely well. I think if you don't have a perfect seal, your paint dries out. And sometimes I've seen guys think they've had a perfect seal. And they haven't, and they've opened up their paints, and it's solid with a screw cap. It's pretty easy to know when you've got a solid seal, and I just like the way they work. So there you go. A bit of a discussion on paint, something to think about, and I will get to painting something uh, soon. I'm... Um, It'll be a couple of weeks, I think, before the uh, figures arrive that the dude's sending me. So, uh, And you wanted to start on armour. So I might start with one of these sort of guys, or one of these sort of guys, because they're meant to be metal. You know, so uh, armour on a knight, armour on a powered armour, armoured on a walking mech, is all fundamentally similar. So I might start with something like this for you, since I've got to paint the damn thing anyway. And we'll see how we go. And I'll be doing that soon. I just got to get a couple of things out of the way. And then I will do that one for you. So, model on, dude. <laughs>